Hello everyone and welcome to my Minecraft Technic Pack tutorial. Um, I'd like to get started by saying this will be episode 1 of a tutorial series for Tec the Technic Pack. Um, in this episode I will be showing you how to make some of the different machines from Industrial Craft 2. Um, as you can see in my inventory here in the quick bar slots, I actually have a variety of different materials, um, the majority of which you should be familiar with and I'm not really going to go over too much. However, there are a few new materials that you may notice. Uh, mainly being tin ore, copper ore, and sticky resin. Um, copper ore and tin ore, you can simply go mine. They're quite easy to come by. They're re relatively uh, common. Um, they're probably by far easier to find than gravel almost. It's almost ridiculous how easy it is to find copper, especially. Um, however, sticky resin you may not be familiar with. Sticky resin is collected by tapping a rubber tree. Now, you might be asking how to tell what a rubber tree looks like and how you're expected to, air quotes, tap it. Um, in order to tap a tree, you need to make yourself a tree tap. So, I'm going to make myself five tree taps, er, yes, five tree taps. Sorry, I'm just trying to do some quick math in my head here. Um, we're going to make five tree taps. Um, four of these will be needed later on for one of our machines that I'm going to show you, but the first tree tap is just so I can show you how to tra tap a rubber tree. Now in this orchard here you can see there's a variety of different trees and I'm going to quickly level them off. There's a standard tree here, a birch tree, a pine tree, and on the left all four of these are what are called rubber trees. Now as you can see there's a slight visual difference. The logs are actually darker than the standard tree in the pine tree and the leaves are about the same color as a birch tree but with their different color log, it makes it relatively easy to distinguish the two. Um, the, there's two key features that distinguish these, especially from other trees. Um, one being, and apparently I can't find any. I thought I had some over here somewhere. Um, being a yellow rectangle, hopefully I don't have to respawn any trees. Um, but the key feature being a yellow rectangle on the side of the log, which I seem to not have any of, amazingly. Uh, four trees, there are no rectangles so far. Um, but their key features are the yellow rectangle on the side of the tree, as I said two or three times now. Um, as well as the fact that on the top, which it, you can kind of see from here, there's actually a stack of tree leaves sticking straight up above the stack of logs, which makes it especially easy to recognize them from a distance. Um, Alright, well, I was hoping to be able to show you guys how to extract rubber from a tree. I'll just try to quickly explain it. Basically, you end up with a yellow rectangle on the tree, and in order to get it, you click and hold your right mouse button on that block. Um, as you can see right now, if I left click, nothing happens, and if I try to right click, I get nothing. If there's a yellow rectangle and you click and right hold the right mouse button, you will actually have a bunch of sticky resin come flying out at you. The reason I say click and hold is if you just simply click it, the rectangle will stay there, which means there is more sticky resin still in the tree. So to move on quickly, as I've spent a little bit too much time on that, um, we're going to run down here, and the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to put our tin, copper, and sticky resin in these furnaces. Uh, why are we doing that? Well, well, it's useless. Um, basically, we're trying to get the materials we actually need for later on with the rest of making this stuff. Now, I'm not going to wait for these to smelt as that's going to take too long, so I'm simply going to take my pre-smelted materials from the second stack of furnaces. So I've got my copper, I've got my tin, and apparently my rubber didn't all smelt. And of course, now I'm just going to quickly tell you guys, none of this, or all the stuff that I've actually collected so far is Ill illegitimate, um, as this is just a tutorial guide, it's just to show you guys how to actually make this, so don't think I'm actually cheating here when I do this, I'm just showing you guys. Um, the first recipe, or first thing we're going to make is a copper cable using our copper ore and a, our rubber. Now as you can see, there, this is the recipe here for copper, three pieces of rubber along the top, three along the bottom, and three pieces of copper in the middle. Um, as you can see, um, I'm actually only going to be making four. However, as you you can obviously see, it actually is showing that there are five of each item in here. Why is that? Because I'm leaving the 
I'm leaving one of everything in the bottom so that I can leave the recipe in this. As this is an automatic crafting table, those items won't fall out when you leave the crafting table page. Um, this is good for if you're worried about ever, um, if you're ever worried you're going to forget how to make something. Um, a good way of doing this is to simply make yourself, oops, I'm really goofing this up right now, um, is to simply make one of these an automatic crafting table, which I'll be showing you in my next episode. Um, and then you won't have to worry about your items dropping out every time you back out when you forget something. Alright, so now that we've got ourselves some 4 RE batteries, which I forgot to mention, the RE batteries are another material we're going to need for the machines. You can actually charge these up and use them to power your machines instead of using what, one of the machines I'm going to make the generator. But um, for now, I'm just going to show you how to make the machines as the batteries are kind of useless and they're just a temporary fill-in for some of the higher higher on later, or higher and later on machines. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to smelt our iron ore. Again, there's 32 pieces there. I'm not going to wait for it all to smelt. I'm actually just going to take my 32 iron ingots out of the second furnace. Um, now, in order to make the machines from Industrial Craft 2, we actually need refined iron. And in order to make refined iron, we actually need to smelt our iron ingots again, which will give us refined iron. And as you can see, I didn't smelt all my iron into refined iron, as I will actually need five pieces of iron ingot to make a iron furnace later on to make an electric furnace. Now, you might be wondering, what, what do we need so much refined iron for? Well, we're going to make ourselves a machine block, which is the basis for almost every machine in Industrial Craft 2. As you can see, there's a lot of refined iron required for this. We're actually only going to make three, so you only need 24 for this part. You should have three left over. We're going to take three machine blocks out, and we're now going to make ourselves an electronic circuit with the rest of our refined iron. All right. So, the electronic circuit looks like this. As you can see, this is where the majority of our copper cables are disappearing to, which is why we made so many in the first place. We're going to make three of those as well, and now we're going to make the machines. The first machine I'm going to show you is the generator. The generator creates the electricity used to power the rest of your machines. Now, the recipe for a generator, the generator here, is one furnace on the bottom, machine block in the middle, and a battery on top. All right, so I'm going to take the generator, I'm going to put it in my inventory for now. I'm not going to show you how to place these machines down right now. I'm actually in the future going to make a video to show how to make an automatic diamond making fast factory. Um, so for now, I'm just going to store these in my inventory and I will show you how to place them down and how to organize them so that they work properly later on. And the second machine we're going to make is an extractor. Um, unfortunately, I can't stack my tree tabs for now, so I have to actually make the extractor and then replace my tree tabs to keep my recipe in my invent or in the crafting table. Oh crap. Whatever. That was an accident. But you get the idea. The extractor basically allows you to take or to receive three pieces of rubber for every one piece of sticky resin you place into it, and you can get one piece of rubber rubber for every rubber wood you get from chopping down a rubber tree. The next machine is the macerator. The macerator allows you to double your output of or ingots. Basically what it does, you take one piece of iron ore, you put it in, it grinds it down to two pieces of iron dust, which you can then smelt and get one iron ingot per dust. So it doubles all your ore, or it doubles your uh, mining output basically. So we're going to use our last machine block in our electronic circuit, make ourselves a macerator. Again, I'm just going to put that in my inventory now. In order to make an electric furnace, which is the a much more efficient version of a furnace and is actually powered by the generator and electricity from industrial craft. We need an iron furnace which works very much like the normal furnace that it, in that it requires actual fuel. But it is actually, I believe it's 12% more efficient than a standard furnace. However, I don't want to be using normal fuel. I want to power it using industrial craft. So, we're going to make ourselves one iron furnace, and then we're going to use the iron furnace and our remaining electronic circuit to craft an electric furnace. Now, the final thing we have to make here is a bat box, simply to store our power or store the power created by our generator. Um, the reason we want to make a bat box is because when you use a generator, or when you use the generator over here. For example, when you power the generator, it will generate a certain amount of charge and store it within the generator. And every time you decide to use, say, the macerator and the electric furnace, it's going to turn your generator back on. 
which is powered by coal or charcoal or whatever you decide to use as fuel. It's powered like you'd fuel a furnace, for example. Um, now, this isn't too bad of a. If you don't have a bad box, it's not the most. It's not. It's not that it's a bad way of doing it, but it's not the most efficient way. Um, by running a generator hooked up directly to a machine, you waste a lot more coal and fuel than you would if you had it hooked up to a bad box and take the fuel out of the generator whenever you finish charging your bad box. The bad box holds about 40,000 charge, which is more than enough to power an electric furnace for the majority of, an, of one Minecraft, Minecraft day. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to show you how to sh set them up right now, but I will show you in the future. Uh, thanks guys for watching. If you like the way I've done this using what I like to refer to as my slide wall over here, where I just kind of work my way along the wall through all the recipes and then make you guys the machines so you can see. If you like that, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Like, favorite, um, if you want or feel like you want to watch any more videos I upload, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, thank you, um, good luck, and have fun.